Hey everyone, welcome back to the series. In this episode, we're diving into one of the most important aspects of creating stunning renders in D5, lighting and camera setup. You'll learn how to transform your scene using realistic HDRIs, fine-tune lighting parameters, and set up cinematic camera angles that really bring your architecture to life. We'll also explore features like AI atmosphere match, LUTs, post-processing tricks, and even some grass detailing to push that realism a bit further. By the end of this video, you'll have all the tools you need to make your scenes feel more polished, dynamic, and professionally lit. Let's jump in. So this is where we left off last time. First, let's head over to the Environment tab, where you'll find the main lighting options, GeoSky, Custom, and HDRI. For the most realistic lighting with minimal setup, go with the HDRI option. If I open the HDRI list, you'll see there are several presets ready to use. I'm going to switch out to the current HRI because it feels a bit flat. Let's go with something that adds a brighter, more inviting tone, like the midday option. Once applied, you can adjust the light intensity and rotation to match your scene. If we scroll down, there's also an option to enable sunlight. Be sure to let the sun direction follow the HDRI. This avoids conflicting shadows and keeps the lighting cohesive. Now let's move to the Effect tab. This section works like a mini post-production suit. You can apply an LUT to stylize your scene and adjust its strength to get the desired balance. Just below that, the post-processing section gives you final control over your final look. Things like exposure, contrast, highlights, and more. These adjustments can really elevate the mood and clarity of your render. Next up is a powerful feature called AI Atmosphere Match. Here you can upload a reference image, and D5 will attempt to recreate the mood and lighting from that image within your scene. My go-to method is to generate the reference using Midjourney. Let's do that now. The prompt I'm using is Sahahadit, Simple Curves Architecture, Daylight, Contrast, Photograph, Sunny, Blue Sky, Green Vegetation, Cityscape, Tree Foreground, Road, Cars, and POV, alongside these parameters, RAW and V7. Once I find an image I like, I'll download it and return to D5. Before proceeding, make sure to save your current view. That way, you can always come back to it along with the lighting setup. Now drag the reference into the AI Match window. Snap your current view and click Generate. When it's ready, hit Apply. It won't be perfect, but it gives you a great starting point, and you can always fine-tune it afterward. You can also reposition elements while maintaining your composition by clicking the camera lock icon, a great way to adjust without losing your framing. Quick reminder, all the project files used in this tutorial, including the mid-journey reference image, D5 render scenes, and the full Rhino model are available on my Patreon. If you'd like to explore the project deeper or follow along step by step, check it out. It's a great way to support the series and gain access to exclusive assets. Now let's add more realism to the grass area, which still looks a bit flat. First, I'll select the ground and switch the material from grass to custom. Then in the asset tab, I'll go to materials, natural, raw materials, dirt, choose a suitable option, download it and apply it. Next, we'll bring it to live using the scattering tool. It's located up here. Once selected, choose the lawn option. I'll go with meet 05. Apply it to the lawn area and hit create. This might take a few seconds, but once it's done, the difference is huge. Looking much better already. Now let's dive into the camera settings by clicking the camera icon. We'll be using the image mode. Panorama is mainly used for 360 renders. Here we can control the field of view and focal length, which affect how zoomed in or wide the view feels. These two settings are linked. For architectural scenes, I like to set it at around 25 millimeters. It strikes a nice balance between depth and clarity. Next is the aspect ratio, which determines the final shape of your render. The ideal ratio depends on your project, but 16 to 9 is a solid general choice for most visual presentations. Then there's the resolution. 4K is typically more than enough for most clients 
unless they request something specific. With everything set, we're ready to render. Click the render button to begin. Once it's finished, I highly recommend checking out D5 Render's AI post processing. It adds an extra layer of polish and can dramatically enhance realism. Also, try experimenting with AI style transfer. In some cases, it can take the final image even further in terms of mood and visual quality. Lastly, don't forget to explore the Effects tab one more time. You'll find the post-production and motion blur panels. Motion blur is especially useful for adding dynamic movement to characters or vehicles. Just select the object and apply the blur for a more cinematic look. And that wraps up this final episode of the series. Thanks so much for following along. When I started this project, I was learning D5 Render from scratch myself. And honestly, it's been a great experience. I've learned a ton throughout this journey, and I hope these episodes have helped you grow your skills too. Even though this series is ending, there's plenty of D5 content coming soon. Tutorials, workflows, and deeper dives into specific tools and techniques. If you want to support the channel and access all the files from this series, including the D5 scenes, Rhino model, and Me Journey images, head over to my Patreon. It really helps keep these projects going. And of course, if you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss what's coming next. Thanks again for being part of this series. I'll see you in the next one.